to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. One thing before we go any further, if you're ever tempted to buy a low-priced package of malted milk, I think you owe it to yourself to think twice before you make your purchase. Of course, you want to get a bargain if you can, but remember this, products costing less often are not real bargains. When you buy a cheap imitation of Horlicks, you just don't know what you're getting. There's no economy in eating food that's inferior in quality. So for real value for your money, for results, insist on Horlicks, a product of the finest quality. Every ingredient in this famous malted milk is the best and purest that money can buy. From the choice selected malt barley to the rich, full cream milk it contains. Ask for Horlicks at the soda fountain, too. Malted milk drinks are so much more delicious, give far better results when made with Horlicks. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, when we left our old friends last week, Abner had just returned to Pine Ridge after a two days absence with a big automobile and a chauffeur. He explained his disappearance of last week by informing his friends that he had been in at the county seat to get first-hand information about how to conduct himself in society. <laughs> and since his return, he's been cutting quite a figure in Pine Ridge socially. As we look in on our friends today, we find Big Huddleston down at his store. Lum is just entering. Listen. Well, come in, Lum. Hey, Granny Dick, I told you you'd be sorry you never bought no stock in that silver mine. Did you sell it? No, not yet. Had a meeting of the stockholders, and Mr. Worthington made us an offer, but we never took it. Uh, how much did he offer you? Why, he never offered but a million dollars for it. A million dollars? Yeah, I reckon he could. He thought he could just buy it for any price, you know. You mean he offered you a million dollars for that mine and you turned it down? Yeah, most of us wanted to take it, but Squire just wouldn't listen to it at all. Said it's worth about twice that much. Well, for goodness sake. Well, you better take him up on that before he changes his mind. Well, he's done went back to Arizona now. Left right after the meeting. Oh, he was mad. <laughs> I reckon he thought we wouldn't know what it was worth, you know, and he could buy just any old price. Yeah. Well, I don't believe that he offered any such amount as that, though. A million dollars, that's too much. Sounds like one of the Squire's wild stories to me. Oh, no, sir. No, sir. I hear I hear him with my own ears. He got right up in the meeting and said he was ready to pay us a million dollars cash money for it. Well, in the first place, I don't believe he's worth that much money. Who, Mr. Worthington? Why, well, I know. He looks like he's just putting on a big front to me. Why, you could tell he's got money. Driving that big car and tell by the way he was dressed. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's rich man. Abner's got a big car and a chauffeur and a lot of clothes, and I know he's not any millionaire. Well, Abner's just showing off, though. I'm getting disgusted with him. What's the matter? Oh, all this society foolishness. I never seen a thing go to a fellow. <laughs> That's funny coming from you, Lum. I thought you were the ring leader in this society business around here. And I was till he got back in town. Professor Willoughby and me both, he just had to take a back seat now. <laughs> Can't keep up with him, huh? Couldn't nobody keep up with him. He went plumb hog wild. Well, I haven't seen him to talk to him since he got back Friday. And I never seen if he could change some older fellow in my life. Here we was all trying to get him in society there for a while, and now everybody's trying to slow him down. So. <laughs> I tell you, Dick, he can't keep up the pace he's going. He was the only stockholder that wasn't at the meeting a while ago. I called up his place to get him to come over there, and he was still in bed asleep. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon, mind you. Still asleep? Yes, sir. Elizabeth said he never got in until after 5 o'clock this morning. He's just worried to death about the way he's carrying on. <laughs> well, I guess she sees now how Abner felt when she was going in for society so strong. Oh, yeah. yeah she's quit now. That is, she's trying to. Abner's been dragging her out to these bridge parties at all hours of the night. Her trying to work in the field of a daytime and keep up with him of a night. Well, I'm sorry to hear of Abner acting that way. Somebody ought to talk to him. Talk to him? Just wasting your breath. Well, I didn't know he was carrying on that way. I knew he had that big car and a chauffeur and all. And uh, what is he called, that chauffeur, Adolf? Yeah, Adolf. <laughs> I feel sorry for him. Abner's about got him wore down to a nub trying to keep up with him. Yeah. Yeah, he's just liable to wake him up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning to get him to drive him someplace or not. <laughs> Time don't mean nothing to Abner no more. Like Friday night, night he got back. He had the uh, FFPRs over at his house for a buffet supper. Played bridge till about midnight, and then he wanted to load the whole crowd in his car and drive into the county seat. Some nice spot he said he found in there where they got good Chinese food. 
You mean he wanted to go in there and eat at that time of night? Not only that, but he went. Me and Pearl and Elizabeth had to go with him. Nothing else we're doing. Went into this place and they had a big show floor, or show floor, or floor show, Abner called it. Floor show. Yeah, singing and dancing and all that stuff. I never seen much of it myself. Went sound asleep right there at the table. <laughs> well, we never got in so clean after broad daylight. Ordinary my getting up time. I saw him. And I don't reckon he'd have left in if they hadn't closed the place up on him. Last ones to leave. For goodness sake. Yeah, these different singers coming around the table, you know, to sing to us and have her give them a dollar bill. Oh. Just throwing his money away. Why, sure he is. He ought to have more sense than that. Elizabeth looked right pitiful, too. Sitting there trying her best to keep away. Nodding. Every once in a while her chin would drop clean down on her chest. <laughs> Couldn't hardly keep her eyes open. Well, she chopped cotton all day the day before. Oh, well, that's a shame. Abner ought to be whipped taking her out like that. Well, he treats her nice. That is, he thinks he's showing her a big time. You know, here a while back, she's complained about him not being turned social. Like yeah, she, I know, uh, I know she was. Said he was getting backwards, <laughs> so he's trying to make up for lost time. Yeah, he's making up for it, all right. Yeah, keeps telling her if he'd uh, known society was that much fun, he'd have been in it long ago. <laughs> and he grabbed Elizabeth up and make her dance with him. Had a place there to dance out in the middle of the floor, about 15 foot square, it looked like. And the whole crowd trying to dance at once, you know. Well, Abner used to didn't like to dance anything but a square dance. Well, I wish you could see him now. Him and Elizabeth just stopped everything the other night. Everybody just backed off and watched them, let them have it. <laughs> they was doing what Abner called uh, karaoke. Elizabeth dancing at karaoke? Well, he was. She was just standing there blinking, sort of. Embarrassed, I think. <laughs> so Abner's taking in the nightclub now, huh? Oh, he ain't missing nothing. Spending money like he'd growed on tree. That's a shame. You know how many suits of clothes he's got now? No, no, I just saw him Friday. He was all dressed up then. Well, see, he's got seven new suits of clothes. One for every day in the week. And besides that, he's got a full dress suit and a morning suit, he calls it. Morning suit? Yeah, I don't know what he needs with that, and he sleeps all morning. <laughs> well, yonder comes Grand Tabby Spears. Yeah, he's been running around with Abner. Oh, that's a fine thing. He was over at the meeting a while ago, but I reckon he knows what took place. Slept through the whole thing. Abner will have him on a funeral list here if he don't quit associating with him. <laughs> no, sir, Abner ain't a fitting companion for an old man like it, Grandpa. <laughs> no, no, Grandpa better not start that. Uh, hello, Grandpa. Come in. Uh, howdy, howdy. How are you, Richard? All right, Grandpa. How are you? Well, I'll tell you the truth, the truth I don't know, Richard. I'm so sleepy I can't tell hardly. <laughs> He thought I'd come by and get my bail and go on back to bed. I was out with that crazy Abner Peabody last night. Never got in till after five o'clock this morning. Well, no wonder you was asleep. Where'd you go? Why, we left his place this afternoon to take a little ride, and he kept studying up places to go and things to do. Yeah, Lama, just tell me about the way Abner's behaving since he got back. Oh, it's a sign. Society went right straight to his head. Even Professor Willoughby can't keep up with him. <laughs> well, I've took out myself. It just took him to show me how silly society is. I thought you were trying to get him in society here a while back, Ron. I was, but now I'm trying to get him out of it. Yeah, he better be taking that money he's throwing away on foolishness and invest it in that mining stock of Squires. Yeah, that's what I told him. I just bought myself another hundred dollars worth. You put another hundred dollars in that silver mine, Grandpa? Yeah. Squire let a few of his friends on it before the price goes up again. Is the price going up? Yeah, he said in a day or two it's liable to go to a thousand dollars a share. A thousand dollars a share? Well, here I am, president of the company, and looks like I don't have no say-so about nothing. <laughs> I might want to run it up to a million dollars a share. And well, he's just selling it like hotcakes now. Everybody's getting in it now since this Mr. Worthington offered that million dollars for it. Yeah, well, I must tell me about that a while ago. I can't hardly understand that either. Sure. Why turning that price down? Well, Dick don't much believe me, Grandpap. You hear it, he didn't get up there in the meeting. No, I tried. He was asleep when he was talking. <laughs> well, they told me about him often that, so I reckon he got up meeting. So uh, folks are really buying the stock around here, other Grandpap? Oh, my, yes. We'd have an after taking another share, and Sister Simpson bought some more, and... I don't know, might not. Hey, Taylor Wee Hunt got another two shares. Well, I hope Squire did the right thing and turned him down on that price, but a million dollars is a lot of money for any mine. Oh, yeah, it's a lot. Oh, wait a minute. Huh? Mm. Look, driving up out there in front. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. I just hope he don't want me to go places with him tonight. 
Right, Jack, you know that is a fine car he's got there, though. Oh, yeah, after he got a bargain in that, he said. Say, look at that suit of clothes he's got. Second-hand <laughs> car. Yeah, look at those clothes, though. You can see those plaid stripes from here. Yeah, that's one I ain't sold yet. That's right, I'd love to have one of them cigarette holders like he's got there. That that thing's two foot long. <laughs> He sure give him something to talk about around here, I'll say that. Uh, just wait till I ain't off. I'll be back in a minute. Now, howdy, boys, howdy. Howdy, Abner. Come on back, Abner. Kind of dressed up today, aren't you? Oh, I've got better clothes, but these is comfort. You ought to have been to meeting a while ago, Abner, Mr. Oh, Worthy. I don't care nothing about that. I just run over to tell you boys I'm throwing a little party over at my place tonight. I'd love to have all you boys there. And Abner, I'm just going to have to stay home and get some sleep tonight. Oh, you can sleep when you can't do nothing else, Grandpa. They're getting to be a sissy. What's the matter? Can't you take it? I don't know where I can be there or not myself, Abner. Oh, nuts. What's the matter with you birds? Just a bunch of deadheads. You're going to miss something now if you ain't there. I've got the Macmillan boys coming over and we're going to dance till about 12 and then have a swimming party down to Mill Pond and then we're coming back to our place for breakfast. Well, when you aim to do any sleeping... Well, I don't know hardly, Lom. I thought we might go in the county seat and play a little golf in the morning and all go to the races tomorrow afternoon. Oh, my God. And now, tomorrow night, I've got a spot picked out to have <laughs> Well, Abner, Abner certainly wasn't joking when he said he would set them a pace in society that it would be hard to follow. Ladies and gentlemen, here's an interesting letter from the owner of Bronze Drugstore in Merrill, Wisconsin. Listen. Mr. W.H. Oberchon, the mayor of our city, came into my store this morning. He happened to see a display of Horlicks on our counter and made the following remarks. Do you know that if it had not been for Horlicks malted milk, my oldest son would not be living today? We experimented with all kinds of baby foods for him and also with different grades of milk. But he kept getting worse from day to day. We finally came to Horlicks. And from the time he started taking it, he gained each day. And soon became well and strong. Mr. Oberchon has been mayor of this city for the past four years and is also head of the Merrill Business College here. I thought this would probably be an interesting letter to read on your broadcast. And a very interesting letter it was. Thank you very much. Mothers, you can get Horlicks, you know, at any druggist. This is Carlton Bricker speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks. We'll now bid you all goodbye until tomorrow at the same time. <laughs>